When you're falling through the air at 100 miles an hour, a life or death emergency can arise in an instant, and there may not be enough time to solve it. A team of stunt divers helped us reconstruct the daring decision of the moment that changed the course of a life on Good Friday of 1987. A two to three mile jump to Earth is a soaring pleasure for a skydiver until the horizon line or an insistent altimeter beep warns it's time to pull the chute. On April 18th, in the crystal clear desert air of Coolidge, Arizona, hundreds of skydivers from all over the country had gathered for what they call an Easter boogie. Instructor Greg Robertson was one of the loadmasters that day. I was on the hangar floor, and I watched this lady having trouble packing her rig. And at a boogie, everyone's supposed to know what they're doing. You're not supposed to have untrained students there. So I went up and talked to her and figured out that she was relatively inexperienced, about 50 jumps, and decided, well, I better keep my eye on this one. A little inexperienced, make sure she at least knows what she's doing in the air, isn't going to kill herself or kill somebody else. 31-year-old Debbie Williams was preparing to jump as part of the last group, a six-way round formation. One of the groups that was together was the six-way of relatively inexperienced people. I was acting as the loadmaster and spotter for the aircraft. The formation that they had planned was well within the experience level of that group. They were all going to join hands, forming a circle, break apart, each do a 360-degree flat turn and rejoin their hands. Until their parachutes open, skydivers fall at speeds of over 100 miles an hour. Even when jumping from as high as 13,500 feet, like Debbie's group, a diver has less than a minute and a half to safely maneuver into formation before the chute must be opened. Come on. Tighten up. Tighten up. I give him about a second, I hop out after him, I start diving down, and I check her out in the air. She's in a good track position, real good body position. And I go, hmm, hey, looks like maybe I was wrong, you know, maybe she's better than she was. Somebody's been training her, maybe she picked it up good. And I set up about, oh, 70 feet out from this three-way that's already built, I'm watching these people. Go in. Now, watching Debbie, she starts orbiting. She's not making it in. She's gotten down there, but she's not making it in. She's just orbiting around. All of a sudden, this other dude runs into the formation, hits it, funnels it out, and they drop down a couple of hundred feet below us. The other two jumpers, Debbie and Guy Fitzwater, started diving towards this formation below us now. I look up and I see Debbie trying to get on down there. And I guess she's not watching really where she's going. The impact was as great as a 50 mile an hour car crash. Debbie was knocked unconscious. She turns into a rag doll on her back, starting to spin and starts accelerating away from me. Where we've been doing probably 110 miles an hour, she's probably accelerated up to 130. Guy got initially knocked over and then righted himself. So I decide, well, she needs help. And I go into a no-lift dive, trying to get up to about 200 miles an hour.
Greg caught up with Debbie less than 30 seconds from impact. I lift my head out of this dive and take a look, and I notice there's blood all over her face. And I'm thinking, I'll just let her body swing around and bring the ripcord to me. And all of a sudden, I realize I got absolutely no idea how high above the ground I am. Look out of the side of my eyes real quick, and I decide I've got enough time to do this, but I got to do it now. I drive on in as the legs swing around, grab her with my left hand, and sit her up so the rig will deploy cleanly, pull the ripcord and say, that's your shot. Greg finally managed to open Debbie's chute less than 10 seconds before they hit the ground. Emergency medical technician and avid parachutist Dean Baker had come to watch the boogie that day. Hey, he's in trouble. Where? And there I saw a woman at about 100 feet gliding down and her arms were at her side limp, which is a clear indication that she wasn't in control and wasn't prepared to land. So they... What? Hey, somebody call the ambulance. Already unconscious and heading for an uncontrolled landing, Debbie was going to hit very hard. When I got to her on the ground, I noticed that her face was totally covered in blood, and I noticed a gurgling sound out of her mouth. You okay? She had a free fall collision. I had to pull her reserve on her. Dean immediately took charge of Debbie's treatment. Her swelling stomach indicated severe internal bleeding. I also noticed that her blood pressure was dropping, so I elevated her feet to treat for shock and asked for some mass trousers or something to stabilize the blood pressure. Dean then came up with an idea that helped save Debbie's life for the second time that day. There was nothing there at all except the thought of inflatable flake splints. He improvised and used the inflatable leg splints to stabilize her blood pressure. Call 911. The call for help went out. Coolidge Public Safety. You're going to be okay. Here comes the ambulance, guys. Come on, guys. Okay, tell them where to get it. Get some of this equipment out here. The paramedics arrived and took over prepping Debbie for the helicopter ride to the hospital. Debbie was rushed to the hospital semi-conscious, where it was discovered she had sustained broken ribs, a lacerated liver, and a punctured lung, and was in shock from the loss of blood. Without the quick thinking of both Greg and Dean, Debbie would not have survived. Everybody tells me I'm a hero. By the definition that I heard, I saved somebody's life, I'm a hero, I'm a hero. I simply do what I feel is necessary. As far as I'm concerned, he did put himself in danger because he was thinking about saving my life rather than pulling his own parachute. If Gregory hadn't been there that day, I would be dead now. I would have bounced. Two years later, Debbie is married. She and her husband, Bill, live together in Hawaii, where she's a teacher. I'd like to make another jump this weekend, and I don't believe that if I skydive, I'll have another accident. What are the chances of it happening, you know, two times to the same person? Next. As I'm walking toward the back, the stock boy walks out real stiff. He must have had a gun because of the look on the stock boy's face. All right, everybody, down! 